G'day everybody. Um, in this video I will show you how I created this piece by using the new Lares uh, epoxy metallic pigments. Um, and uh, be patient because uh, it is a bit of a process and a bit of a trial and error but uh, it turned out really really cool. Um, <clears throat> a few different techniques used here. This uh, video is uh, going to be a good one for the newbies and um, for anybody who doesn't uh, want to uh, watch the you know mixing and everything in the beginning just for fast forward to about 20 minutes into the video where I'm actually starting with the pour. But the colors are really beautiful and I'm sure that um, a lot of you will be able to create something really awesome with these colors but this is what I did for the first one so continue watching. So here we are I'm gonna make this one uh, for the newbies just so that you know I've got everything covered in, in one video and for the more advanced people just fast forward to um, the actual pour and um, so what I'm doing here is I've got a scale and I've popped my cup on the scale because the resin that I'm using is uh, measured by weight. It's an epoxy casting resin and I use two types of resin um, and I'm willing to try any resin, whatever works. So this one is Aldex Crystal Cast and it's weighed by uh, weight. So I have a scale here and I'm going to measure up Part B, which is a smaller amount, I'm going to do 60 milliliters here. 52, 3, 4. You can, if you go a little bit over or under, it doesn't really matter. They allow for that. So I've got 60 exactly. How good is that? Okay. Um, and then I've got my part A, which is your resin. That was the hardener. And this is a resin now, so I need to double this number because the ratio is two to one. So one part of hardener, hardener, and two parts of your resin. So two parts, so two times six is 120. So I can tear this and do it from the beginning, but I won't because I'll just add 120 to this and that'll bring it up to 180. Keep going. Hopefully this cup's big enough. Should be. Whoop. There we go. So I went a couple of grams over. It doesn't worry me because it'll still work. Like I said, they allow up to, you know, two, three, five percent over or under. So now that I've got that, I'm going to move my scale out of the way. Turn it off off um, and now mixing time make sure when you when you've got your your resin and when you want to do resin up make sure that you've got everything handy you got to have your stirring sticks um, ready and handy your gloves the the cleaning stuff I use this uh, multi-purpose um, it's lemon scented 99.9 percent .9 germ you know cleaning um, wipes which have alcohol in it. I also use isopropyl alcohol and, uh, and a cloth to clean but this works. This is really really handy because you just pull it out of the bag and it's ready to go um, to clean any spills or you know if you want to clean your gloves or if you get any spots of uh, epoxy on your hands or whatever and it cleans the paste as well so that's a good thing. So have your cups ready, have your torch handy, your pigments, pick your pigments before you start stirring um, and uh, know your colors, know the colors that you're going to use and the uh, design that you want to try and create. Um, so have all of that nice and ready that, um, and then you just uh, go with it. Your room needs to be well ventilated and it needs to be the right temperature for resin to work so 30 sorry 20 anywhere between 21 to 25 degrees but you it usually says on the actual 
um, the bottle of resin that you, you purchase, it'll say the, the temperature that you, you need to work with, with that resin. Um, so what we're looking at here, we want a nice, clear, kind of um, consistency. You don't want any stringy bits. You go pull the pull the resin from the sides and go on at the bottom. Just do a really nice swirl and have a look if there's any strings there. And if there's not, then you're ready to go. Don't worry about the bubbles. You will get bubbles. It's normal. So I've got my uh, new colors here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pour some of this resin in directly into my cups. And then I'm going to pour the, put the actual pigments in it. Okay, so that's all I'm doing. These are just little shot, shot cups, plastic shot glasses. Um, they are, I believe these ones are 50 milliliters. So I do have smaller ones and some larger ones. Okay. I've got an extra cup here because I want to use uh, a white, the Lorez Angel White. And I'm, whoops, running out. So just going to have to scrape up whatever I've got left in there. What I might do is I might just mix a little bit more resin, just a tiny little bit more. Although I think 180 will be enough, but let's just mix some more. So I'll, what I'll do is just get the scale again, pop this whole thing in like that, turn it on. So it's on zero and I might just add 30, 30 grams, which uh, means 10 grams of the part B, sorry, just concentrating, a little bit tricky to do it, got to do small amounts, so here we go, 10 grams and 20 grams of the part A which is the resin part, so that'll bring it up to 30 grams. So I'm doing that real quick now. Twenty-five, seven, a couple more, come on. There we go, 30 exactly. All right. Put the lid on. Make sure you put the lids on straight away so you don't get the lids mixed up because you'll get them stuck and then you won't be able to get them off. Okay, so what I'm doing is real quickly stirring this and I'll be back when it's all mixed. Okay, I'm all organized now. Um, I was thinking of using this deep ocean blue to to as a as a Bit of a uh, background just on the edges because I'm going to be pouring the other colors in the middle so I just will show you each one so you can have a good look yeah, I've got a better light now so I can show you it's beautiful absolutely gorgeous so 10% um you can eyeball things or you can weigh it so you can eyeball it or you can even this is for the newbies, okay? If you get a little pen or a, or a marker, I haven't got one handy. Oh, yes, I do. Ha! <laughs> Look at that. Talk about being organized. So you can kind of mark your, your, where your resin is. Of course, you take this thing out because that'll add to it. So you just kind of mark it and then you can find the middle. So that's your 50% there. And then you kind of just, Go one, two, three, four, five, and then one, two, three, four, five. So your resin, you can put about that much in the bottom of your resin. Okay, this is it's just a real simple, easy way that you do it. And the more you, you do it, 
um, you know, you you can uh, you really get the hang of it, you know. So I can put about that much in there. That that's going to cover that bottom bit. Or you can just pop it on the scale and just measure it. You know, if you've got go in there. If you've got, let's say, a cup which holds 30 grams, um, so 10% of 30 grams will be 3 grams. So you add 3 more grams to it and that's your 10%. Okay? Of course, things do depend on, you know, different densities. Some colors are denser than others. So you just got to play with it a little bit, you know. I'm going to add a little bit more in here. And then that'll be enough for that one. What I do is I just scrape it on the side here. And then get rid of this one. Try and keep things clean because I tend to mess things up very, very easily and quickly. <laughs> so I've got my handy dandy um, cloth there. Oh, it's not a cloth, it's really a a wipe. So then what I do is I just pick that up and bring it down and give it a good stir. Okay, so all I'm doing, just got to make sure that it's all incorporated. Because if you have unmixed paste, it may not set properly, you know, and you want your artwork to set. So here we go. Mixing, mixing, mixing. There we go. So that's my blue. That's going to go around the edges. This is just an MDF board. I haven't primed it. I do suggest that you do prime it. Um, I'm just doing this real quick and I'm going to make it real thick. So it's not going to worry me. Um, let's go with the... No, Millie, you can't come in here, darling. Just talking to my dog. Okay, electric green. This is what it looks like. It's just stunning. 10% going in there. If I can pick it up, it'll be great. That's probably a little bit more than 10%, so a little bit less. Here we go. Right in there. Put the lid on. That was my electric green. Same thing, you kind of wipe it on the side and stir it and give it a good stir. With these metallics, <coughs> excuse me, um, there may be a little separation with some of them. That all depends on pigments, how they react to the metal, um, the metallic. So you just give them a little, little stir. We'll just go like that from the bottom and pick it up from the bottom. Some of them are thicker than others. Um, that's just how they are. This one is a little bit thicker. And it's quite transparent. You wouldn't think, but it is. I'm trying to pick it, pick it up. Sometimes that helps. If you want to um, loosen it up a little bit, just uh, put the whole jar out in the sun and give it a couple of minutes and it'll... It'll loosen. Come on now. Okay, so that's uh, where's this one gonna go? Might just pop this one in here. So I'm gonna speed this up. That's actually I won't speed it up because you need to see all the colors. <laughs> okay, so here is the lilac whispers. Give it a little stir, and this is what it looks like. It's a beautiful color, absolutely gorgeous. If you like violets or lilacs rather. This one can go in there. As you can see I'm just eyeballing everything. And then we're going to go with another transparent one which I only want a little bit of. And that is the Siren Green. This one needs a good stir because the pigment is quite heavy and it drops down the bottom uh, and it separates a little bit from the binder. So this is what this one looks like. It's a bluey green, and that one's going to go in this little cup, maybe a little bit less. Don't want to put too much in there, got to make sure that uh, it sets. 
and then I'm going to go with my blushing pink I've only got a little bit at the bottom of this cup but this is what it looks like blushing pink so I'm going to scrape up some of the bottom and pop it in here next one is the silver rose and this is what it looks like you get a nice little scoop okay very very beautiful beautiful color and there it goes oh three more to go I'm not I'm just using the colored metallics now I'm not using the actual real um, not the real the the actual um, metal colors which are the bronze the um, actually I do want to use the rose gold okay I'm gonna go and grab that so here we go electric blue it's an absolutely stunning color and I love it but I do love the blues I want lots of this one can go in here and okay I'll grab my rose gold and but I wanted some of the white as well so I might just have to get another cup and just pinch a little bit from each one of these because I need a little bit of white okay and um, so here we go the rose gold gorgeous 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 look at that give it a stir that's gonna go in here and just need more sticks now steel blue just too much Gonna put this one in here, and then should have done a live for this one because some people are probably gonna get annoyed with this video going too long. The misty green, look at that! Stunning, stunning color. Of course, they're all beautiful, but I don't know. Some of them just stand out bit more than others that one's going in that one and then the white the angel white 10% of that little bit there is not much which is lucky because I don't have a lot left in my jar that's gonna be enough okay now I'm gonna mix them all and come back Okay, they're all mixed now and I've separated my transparents from the semi-opaques, which are these ones, and my opaques. It does help to, to know which ones are kind of like, um, how would you explain it? Thicker and some of them are thinner. Some of them are like really dense, the pigments, like this white. The way I... Can tell which one is transparent which one isn't is I swirl my cup this is obviously a see-through cup so I swirl it around and then I'll watch and see how long it takes for this to become transparent as you can see it's taken ages because the white is quite an opaque color it's very dense um, same with this uh, rose gold Okay, but not as dense as the white same thing swirl it around like that and then you watch watch the wall of your cup and see how long it takes so this one and let's show one of a good example of a real transparent one you can even see with this one it's quite transparent just on its own see that doesn't take long at all very very transparent it's uh, almost see-through but even transparent colors so 
So these are my transparent, these are my, okay, semi, semi opaque or semi transparent. See, this is how you can tell. Swirl it and then watch. Okay, but even the transparent can be made to, to look um, opaque. It just depends on how thick you want to, you, you pour it on. You know, if you pour it on thick, it'll be opaque. So these ones, let me just move this around a little bit, make sure that you can see everything. And let's get uh, cracking. Alrighty, so I've got my deep ocean blue, which is just an amazing color. I just have to show you again. Look at that, beautiful. I wanted to put this around the edges, but I don't want to use all of it. So I'm going to put some around the edge and some not. I might need to lift this board up. Give me a second. Alrighty. So what I have underneath here are just some little caps. I got them from the hardware hardware store and they just, uh, there's some safety things that go on top of the, the um, some I don't know, signs and things like that. But they were really cheap. So resin slides off them real easy. So that's why I got them. Right, now let's get started. Okay, for this process, I have to stand up. And yes, I am wearing my PJs. <laughs> As you do. They already have resin on them. So here we go. Gorgeous color. Let's just go around. I just wanted to do the edges and try not to lose all of it. So I'm gonna leave some in the cup. Okay, and eh, just bring it up to the, right up to the edge. So I'll be doing that all the way around. If it decides it wants to um, slide over the edge, I'm happy. And if it doesn't, I'm happy either way. Whatever I do, whatever sort of it wants to do. And, and this is the approach I have to art is, um, although I do like to control uh, uh, some of the, the outcome, or most of the outcome, but... I do let uh, the, the painting do its own thing. As an art therapist, I've learned to, you know, let go and let uh, let it create itself. You know, let it uh, show whatever is going on. And that may sound a little bit funny and weird to some of you, but a lot of you un do understand that if you are in a bad mood, or something's going you know wrong in your life or you're not happy or whatever you just can't seem to get your painting right something keeps stopping you from creating uh, what you want to create you know and that's because your emotions are not right so get yourself in a good state mentally you know emotionally and then just let things happen and they will trust me just what I'm doing rubbing some of it off my, my fingers there and I'm gonna go a little bit more just there like so because I've been mucking around with it you know for so long it's starting to go a little bit thick on me which is what happens when you go over time, but uh, I actually don't mind working with a thicker resin. I find that uh, I have more control that way. Cleaning my, my fingers and I'm just going to use my torch. don't know if you can see but that blue even it's already doing something here I'm gonna try so that you can see some of the things that are going on there Um okay let's go with some colors now 
Here we go. Might sit down for this one. Okay, so the one that I'm applying right now is the the blue star. And I might just do some swirls. I think my board is a little bit crooked because it keeps moving. I'm just going to pop that one there for now. Actually, I won't. I'll leave it because sometimes, you know, you need that couple of drops in there. Um, uh, so, there was that misty green. Here we go. Misty green is going to go over, just over and across. I'm using a lot of colours here. Okay, so just to see how they interact and what they do. but you don't have to you can create a beautiful piece of art with just two colors you know black and you know have some contrast it looks just looks gorgeous like that Alrighty, which one is this one? Oh, this is my steel blue lots of blues but they're all different shades and once again just uh, crisscrossing and And kind of um, placing one next to the other. Now let's go with some of these. I might have to bring them a bit closer. Okay, I'm going to go with the beautiful silver rose. Here we go. Oh, see that? That's what I'm talking about. What happened? It just kind of big blob fell out. I wasn't planning on that, but it wanted to do that, so I'm letting it. It's all about allowing. <coughs> okay. Now, let's go with the Lilac Whispers. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Once again. Oh, there it goes again. Same thing. Blob. Right across there and over here. I'm not um, calculating anything. I'm not uh, following any kind of a design that I have in mind. Nothing. Just going with it. Okay. Leave a few drops in there for Ron. Ooh. Electric green another gorgeous one and I have to stand up now because I can't really see what I'm doing and what you can hear in the background is my daughter <laughs> playing with my grandson of course they're not allowed in here what I'm doing is just uh, kind of going through these areas oh my goodness look at that colors amazing We'll go through that a bit over there yeah a little bit and across that one there so you can see the uh the opaque ones they're really really kind of it's just sitting there okay oh, pop something underneath here keep it up Okay, now some of the blushing rose. Just going to do smaller, thinner strands of the blushing rose because it does stand out quite a bit. I want to put some over here. Right across there, maybe over here a little bit. Put 
they will move a little bit there Ah, yep we're getting through getting through it now this is a um, siren green it's like a fishtail green it is, it is uh, very transparent but see when you pile it on like that it looks quite beautiful and you can do things like that just move it go so maybe this way I just want to go around the edges to help that blue a little bit because it needs it right there and it's a super super shimmery green so you're kind of watching where you're placing things and how you want them okay there you go that one very very transparent and the blue star also very transparent so here we go with that one they just add look at that they just add the uh, dimension which is uh, really cool this is quite different <laughs> And you can even leave it like that if you want to without you know doing anything much to it I uh, need something here where's my electric green I think I want to add some of that electric green in there to cover this a bit more here Uh, the whole board is covered now and I still have quite a bit of just making sure that I'm still recording <laughs> it does stop sometimes oopsie and need to fix that one up a little bit just looks like it's too just a blob there now torch to get rid of those bubbles on its own like that looks really amazing okay let's just get a little bit of uh, where is it here it is my rose gold now this is going to be an interesting one okay I'm gonna go kind of try and have a small stream a thinner stream Across to there and maybe from here like so and over to there and I've got lots uh, left which I can use on another little painting or maybe even a um, like a coaster or something and let's do the white now just gonna need a little bit of white don't want too much but before I do the white, I want to use my heat gun.
as you can see that rose gold is so dense it's just sitting there we're going to get some white as well just going to go crisscross over that rose gold if I can get it out it'd be great there we go there and maybe here like that now he's done Beautiful cells happening, all that movement's kind of squished them together and making some really beautiful wrinkly effects there. It's just looking, oh my goodness, look at that. It's looking great already. Just going to do a little bit more over here. Maybe blow it this way. Some more over here. Okay, and I've got lots of this rose gold left, which I want to put. Oh, you can see the shimmer here coming from my um, window here. Which one is it? That one there. Okay, so that's all happening. Might just do some tilting now, just to see how that moves and to get it over the edges because we've got plenty there. Turn it around this way. Just stretching it now and that white is just going through the all the colors the metallics and creating some beautiful wispy kind of beautiful effects a lot is going over the edge I know but I'm just trying to create something I want that smooth kind of trend transition back a bit more there we go I don't know if you can see that this is a slow process but it's worth it with a little bit of patience good because you can fix up the edges okay. more stretching
see that's what I love that kind of um oh here we go more white okay I like that kind of flow that I'm getting there that's that's just what I love okay so now that I've got I've got lots of these colors left I can just add some more where's that white actually the gold rose gold don't know don't like what the white has done there so I'm just going to go with the rose gold over it a little bit like that and over here as well it's because I stretched it too much Just love this electric green so I'm going to pull that through okay. oops these and where's my electric blue here it is two favorites Love it. I've got lots of this pink, blushing pink, which looks just amazing there. Let's see if I can do some more. And some of this gorgeous blue, which I really liked in the beginning, and I still do, but I lost a little bit of it. And now I just want to pour some over here near this pink and across like that. Oops, there's a drop. I think I've got plenty now. Just gonna um, give it some more heat now. going to add a little bit more white over here just to fix this now so we can go back and forth and fix things Bit. 
just like that. Then I'm going to torch it. Wow, that looks very busy and uh, lots of colors and lots of things happening there and uh, I like it. Where is that pink? So pretty much can see all the colors. None of them have disappeared, which is really, really great. Just adding some more of this pink through. And what I like to do is, I like to pull these lines. I think they really create some really cool effects throughout the painting. But it's a little bit wet now, so it's not really working. But when it thickens a little bit, then it's the best way to do that. Just pull these lines through, like I'm doing here now. So here that already change that whole thing oh I've got so much drippage here which I'm gonna have to fix like my lines and my swirls don't get angry with me this is just my style but you can do whatever you want this is just what I like Just like a tree. It will move. <laughs> it's not going to stay like this. But uh, just what I like to do. Keep adding it. I have to keep going around and seeing where I um, might have missed something. And this white. Gonna add some more uh, of some color through there. Which one should I do? What about this beautiful blushing pink? It's not blushing pink. This is a silver pink. It actually looks really amazing here with this white. So that's what I'm doing. Just adding some more swirlies. looks really really interesting each color is adding something new to the piece it's just beautiful the blue coming through that And 
getting some more of that electric green. So I'm going to give it some more heat now, actually, maybe just a little bit. It's just so warm now, it's, it's, it's ready to set, so what I'll do is I'm just going to um, give it a little bit of heat to pop the bubble. I need something else there. I think I mucked it up. Let's try. Get some more colour in there. Well I, well, I still can. I'm still not happy with it. Not at all. Okay, so I'm, what I might do is I might just do a swipe. I've got one of these thingies. Let's see what it does. See what I can do here. Oh. Full of that, got rid of the white. That one I'm going to leave it there, that's fine. I might just give this a little bit of a shake, just like so. Like that. God, they're good, those colours together. It's just amazing. I've got some little cells happening here. Gonna have to clean that real well. Alright, I think I'm going to leave it at that. This looks so amazing right here. This is just so amazing. I just want to do the whole thing like that now. What does it look like over there? I think I will. Not the whole thing, but I'm going to go here. I don't know if it's going to want to spin now. It doesn't want to spin. Oh, but, oh yeah, it's spinning. Because that just looks so great like that. Gorgeous. That looks great. Let's do this. It's not spinning because it's really thick there. How I'm gonna do it. Well, there you have it. Now a little bit more heat just to bust the bubbles. I want to do that now on black background 
and just just do those those colors so there you have it this is it I'm gonna leave it alone now and um, it's still doing things there's some cells popping here but just these colors together it's just amazing and uh, I'll bring you down closer so that you can have a look now I'm gonna try and save this and paint a couple of coasters thanks for watching bye for now